Hi, this is Christy. Okay, this is video number two for our little graduation decorating series, um, making our little boxes. So this time we're going to make this one. Now I called this one advanced. It is not really advanced. It is just a tiny bit uh, more involved and you get a chance to kind of dress it up uh, and it does require um, a little bit of velcro or a magnet or some kind of closure uh, on it and so uh, and, it, and it takes just a tiny bit more but it's not that much more okay so in order to make this one our dimensions change uh, we are still going to use a seven and a quarter inch wide but we're this one's going to be ten and a half inch Inches long and so we're going to on the seven and a quarter inch width we're going to score at two five and a quarter and then we're going to turn it 90 degrees now I did this one counterclockwise but before you start your scores it doesn't really matter then you're going to score at one inch three inch five seven eight and remember we went one before so one before eight and then at nine okay so again we're going to be at two five and a quarter turn it 90 degrees we're going to score at one three five seven eight one before eight and then nine okay and so there we have those get rid of that and we're going to um, need one other piece let me see here uh, we're going to cut away just like we did before I'm going to uh, cut away remember we want to leave that quarter inch here on the top on the side of this slit here uh, the little slot where our money comes in so I'm just gonna freehand it because I find that easiest uh, so I'm going to come about a quarter inch from the edge and that one got a tiny bit wavy. So I'm just going to come in and square that up about a quarter inch from the edges. Now don't, don't waste too much time on this. It's not that big of a deal. We can clean this up with the paper. Okay. So that'll go there. And, um, we're going to need to have a piece, uh, that is basically a little less than three and a quarter by a little less than two inches tall. So let me go ahead and get that cut and our pattern paper and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back again, and so what we're going to do is, because this part doesn't get glued down and it, it opens up, I like to reinforce this inside piece here, uh, because it, it will get a little flimsy on the edges, and so this is where it kind of takes just a little bit extra uh, out of you. Here's another good opportunity. If you want to, go ahead and do your punch. Um, if you want to, what you can do is usually what I do with my punches is I will just punch a strip and I will find out about, um, let me go ahead and finish this one off. I will find out and I will just kind of measure it up so that I know exactly what I'm going to get at the end. Um, it kind of takes out the guesswork if you have, oh, that didn't punch exactly right. But I'm going to find out where I want this on the edge. So basically, so I started this one over here on the edge here, on the very edge of this top part, and I lined up with the edge of the silver piece. And let's see, when I line this up, I can find out, it's hard for you guys to see the black on black, but I can see on here where I want my scallops to kind of start and stop, and I think I want two of them here. Uh, so in order to center those about where I want them, then it goes right to the edge. Okay, so that means I'm just gonna take this right to the edge and I'm going to, sometimes there's this gap on here, uh, on the Martha Stewart's uh, up here, uh, where the silver stops and you do not have to punch in there. It's just kind of wasting your paper. So if you're careful and you want to save the paper, then you can go ahead and you can uh, I don't have to punch over there because we're going to cut that away. Uh, you can just line it up with the top of that silver uh, 
and you can save that top part of paper and make that piece a little bit longer. Okay, so all I need is it to be on this end, and remember this is where we cut our slot, so this is the edge we want to cut. Now these are going to get cut away, so this center in between these two lines are the only ones that are going to show. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so speaking of which, what we can do now is you can use your scissors for this, but I'm just going to go ahead and use my X-Acto. I am going to cut away. This is going to be our flap. And I'm cutting away these first two squares on either side here. Okay. See, I want to get rid of that score line on that one. Oop. That one's being a little bit of a stinker. I'm going to have to come in here. Okay. All right, so that's what we have there. All right. So what we're going to do now is um, cut just up to this centerpiece on right down the middle of these. And I find it's easier to um, cut these before we start making our folds. That way you're not fighting um, a piece that's trying to curve this way and that. And all we did was, uh, all I did was cut these parts all the way to this line and not past. Okay, so now what we can do is we can fold this over this. And you can fold all four of them at the same time. Okay, and then we can fold our horizontal lines. Okay, and that one. And you'll notice on here, this is pretty flimsy. Plus it's scored, and this is the reason why I cut those two extra pieces. I actually did two extra pieces. So I cut two pieces that are just a little less than two and just a little bit less than three and a quarter. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these on to the underside. You can see how everything is going in this way. This is the underside because we fold it away from our score. So this is the underside here. Now I will go ahead, I'm going to take one of my pieces, which is exactly the same thing. It's a little less than two by a little less than three and a quarter. Uh, and when I say a little less, I mean a sixteenth of an inch less. Okay, so I'm going to add my glue here. Now I'm not coming all the way to the edges because glue spreads. And I'm going to attach that on there. Okay, and if I need to do any trimming, it looks like it needs a tiny bit of trimming over here. You can absolutely do that. Okay, and so once that's on there, then I'm going to use this as a guide to just trim out that center section. And using an X-Acto, I find, is... Um, Pretty much the only way to do that. Um, I'm sure you could probably find a way to use detail scissors to do it, but uh, that sounds really difficult to me. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do, so that's reinforced it a little bit with the paper and the glue, but I'm going to reinforce it some more uh, on the inside. Again, you really should dry fit it and make sure that it fits and it's not overlapping on these where it needs to bend, because if you put a piece of glue piece of paper over top of that bend, that uh, score, it's not going to bend there anymore. Now, it's really important when you put this glue on here to get in between here, in between that little, that little quarter inch, because that's really what we're trying to reinforce is these tiny little tabs right here. That's where it's the weakest. Okay, and you can put this guy on here. Now you can do one of these reinforcements back here, or you can do two. Again, we're just going to flip it to the front side now, and we're going to use that as our guide. Oops, didn't stay very straight. I do a lot better with my X-Acto knife if I am directly over my project. I know, excuses, excuses. 
likely, huh? Uh, but I, I, I actually do enjoy using my craft knife. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but you know, so does glue. And um, we've all seen the difference that glue makes in our project. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull this out. And it does not have to be exact. Okay, and we're going to see. And that one's pretty strong. But I'm going to, just for good measure, I'm going to do the second one. Where did he go? I had a second one somewhere. Okay, if I can't find, well, here, no, I think this is it. I was going to say, if I can't find it, I can't do it. Okay, so I'm just going to add one more layer. Like I said, it's um, it's a little more involved, and it does take a little more exacto work, and uh, you got to use your punch. Well, you don't have to, but that's kind of the the biggest benefit of being able to do this version of it uh, is that you get to have that pretty punch punched edge. Okay, and so, and the reason why I didn't glue both. Uh, pieces down at the same time is because it's a lot to cut through with an exacto uh, you to go through multiple layers uh, it can snap your tip and and people tend to push too hard and sometimes um, your, your cuts aren't as straight and you take the chance of kind of getting a little carried away and cutting yourself so I like to do one layer at a time uh, when possible, and uh, that one's got a little bit hanging over in there, and there we go. Easy breezy. Okay, so now this top is really reinforced. So we have uh, three layers of cardstock, plus we have some pattern paper and glue in between all of them. So it's almost like a tag board. It's very stiff now. Now we do not need to do it on this front panel. You don't need to do it. And now what I will tell you is that there is a way, let me get a little piece um, that goes on the front of that. You can do the, the same punched edge, and I'm trying to see of where that lies. Let's see, if I measure this up on here and I can find out where the repeat is. Okay, so this one goes, it starts right about there, and I'm going to turn it upside down. Let me see that again. So if I put this and I line this up, I can see right here where it stops, and it's hard, you're too far away. This is how I know. You see where it stops? You see where the edge is? That's where I'm going to line up my paper. It's just halfway through that first, that very first um, little scallop. So right here, I'm going to line this guy up, and I'm going to punch there, and then I'm going to line it up over on this side, and punch again. Okay, so hopefully, in theory, <laughs> this should go there. <clears throat> now I have to cut it off, but it does match up that scallop. So that works for me. There you can see the scallop. And it looks like I'm just going to go ahead and notch it uh, to mark how far I want it to come back. I want it to come right about there. And let me go and trim that off. It looks like about an inch, I think. Actually, it's a little less than. Okay. You know what, um, this is such a small piece, I'm going to cut it by hand. Uh, I don't. I don't want to um, mess that one up. So it looks like it's actually... It looks like it's actually about, let's see, that's an inch and a quarter if you go to the edge of the scallop. But that might change, that might be different, you know, depending on what punch you're using. So if you want to get fancy and you want to do this, so you can see, uh, now I've got this little piece here, and I can go ahead and add my glue. And I want to get down there with the edge of the scallops. Oh, you know what, there was one thing I wanted to do first. 
And that is um, on the front here. I'm just going to let this glue dry because I am not ready for it. I just wiped it off a little bit so that it doesn't have any bulky edges, and I'm going to put that aside. I made a boo-boo there. Okay, so what I want to do is, on this other side, okay, we have our punched edge, and we have our top. So then we have this short panel here, and this will actually be the front. If you fold it up, you'll see that this one is actually the front of our piece. So not the short one, but this first one over here. And, of course, it's on the same side. It's on the outside. So I'm going to do a tiny little magnet on mine, and let me see here if I can find my tiny, my itsy bitsy magnets, and I'm going to go ahead and add, uh, it's stuck under my fingernail, it's so tiny, <laughs> and I'm going to use, of course I'm going to use my glossy accents. And I'm going to bring this guy down. Let's see. I want him to... Now it might change uh, depending on, on the depth of your... I want it to be less than an inch. And this is two inches, so I want it to be about three quarters of an inch down in the center. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that guy on there. And I'm going to let him to let him start drying, which I should have done before while I was punching this edge. Um, so I'm going to um, wait on this one for just a minute. So what we're going to do while that's drying, we should still be able to do this. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece and this piece, and I'm going to fold them in. And I'm going to take... these and I'm going to fold it up and I'm going to bring up the bottom and I'm going to glue these on there and I'm going to line up these edges square up these corners as best you can okay and again I'm going to on the other side I'm going to apply glue to the outside close to the edge but not right on it we don't want to mess and then that bottom one comes up And we're going to match up those edges and seal it up all the way on the corners. It's really important that you get these corners because that's where um, that's where it's going to try to lift. That's going to be the difference in, in how, how the box looks. Okay, so I have a tiny little bit hanging here, so I'm going to use the opportunity to snip that off. Okay, so now on this front here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck in these two short tabs, the one-inch tabs. Let me peel this back out of the way. And I'm going to glue these down. These are going to wrap up and over, and I'm going to leave these back ones out. This is going to be the finished look. Okay, so these are going to get glued down straight. Oops, a little camera. These are going to glue down right here, creating a little panel. And so I'm going to apply glue, and this will only go in this section right here. Sorry, a little bit off camera. So this will go right here, and you're going to line it right up in that corner there, nice and even. And you can still, there's a little bit of room, you can reach right into that box. Sorry, I keep on getting off camera. And on this side, you can apply glue to here if you'd like so you know the positioning better. And again, I'm just going to line it up right with the edge of this piece right here so that it stays, you know, that it keeps its shape. Okay. You can give a little bit of a pinch here if it's bowing up a little. And then we're going to just add glue to our front panels And of course, these sides we can glue down because we have um, it's it opens from the top. Okay, and all these layers of glue really help to reinforce this box. Okay, and on this side, and close that up. Again, you want to go ahead and square everything up best you can. 
If there's anything to be trimmed off, it's usually fairly easy to do so. Okay, so now we've got uh, our little magnets dried here. So what I need to do is I need to find another magnet. Now that that's dried on there, then what I can do is I can just drop this on here and it finds its mate. Oop. Ooh, how long has it been out of focus? Okay, so I just found its mate. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this out of the way and I'm going to add on the, I'm going to put a little glue on top too and a little around the edges. That kind of splatted out of the way. Now we can go ahead and add this piece because I wanted that magnet um, underneath the paper. I didn't want it to show on the back side uh, uh, because I'm not going to paper the inside of the box. Okay, so once that's kind of stuck on there, then I'm going to open it up and I'm going to trace it from the back. Now, whatever side you trace your magnet from is where it's going to kind of bump up. That's where it's going to show. That's why I flipped it over. Uh, if I were to push it from this side, it would show more on this side, and I don't want it to show as much on that side, but I do want it to stay locked in place. Now, I can see on here there's a tiny bit. I got this a little offset, but it's no big deal. I'm just going to trim it off, and it still looks pretty good. And now we have a magnetic closure on there. And it's just a tiny little grip right there. Okay, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pieces, which are cut to just less than um, three quarter uh, by um, just less than two inches tall. And again, you want to make sure that you get in the corner on the edges there. It's really getting flushed out. Sorry about that. I think all of this foil and black is really um, hard on my camera. It's hard for it to be able to focus. Okay, so there we go. And it's just enough of a grip to keep it closed. Uh, you could go with a larger magnet if you wanted, but I think this works out just fine. All right, so get on there, you. And um, now the only thing is, is that they tend to, you know, when there's a closure there, uh, they tend to, oops, I just squished it just a little bit. I think I got my magnets off just a little bit. I should have reset them. I should have just pushed it down a little further when I set them on there. So it's sticking up just a little bit. I should have pushed this down, but no big deal. It's still very cute. When you have it to where it opens from the, the front like this, um, they tend to want to open the box versus, um, you know, pull the money out. Um, or at least my husband as the test subject did. He wanted to open the box. So, boy, that is really driving me a little bonkers. Eh, it's okay. <laughs> Make sure that when you guys put on, if you guys do magnets, uh, make sure that you have it all tight in place. I that's it, it was just a little too relaxed on the top there. And so now it's closing very relaxed. <laughs> okay, so I'm just adding these on here. And of course, these are just a little less than two by just a little less than two squares. 16th of an inch less so that um, they don't come all the way to the edge there. And just glue those on there and make it pretty. And so there is our little box. And so we can take our money roll, open up, and this is not the side I punched the little thingies on. So let's go ahead and take this, and you would do the same thing on this little scallop. You would just take your piece, and I'm going to go ahead and show that again just to, uh, for those who uh, might not have watched the first video. Uh, take a piece of scrap piece, fold it in half, and then when you put it into your punch, you want to come almost all the way down, and you want to leave just a little bit, that folded edge, just leave a little bit of it there, and when you leave that on there, then it stays together. So you've created a pull. And you just add on your dry adhesive because you want this to be able to come off of the money. And then you just kind of clip them on there, just like so. And then roll up your money. 
And you can just put them in there, feed them through. And I think I got that backwards. I did get it backwards. So then you could just take this and you could, like we did before, you could fold it over. Oopsie. Straight would be better. About that three quarters of an inch. And it's ready to go. That, that foil is really freaking out the camera. And then you can just pull them out just like that. Uh, the newer the bills, uh, the better it works, uh, the more straight they are. Um, and don't forget that when you go to, once you gift it away, make sure you inform them that they do not, um, you don't pull these apart. You have to just peel them apart and then rub off the dry adhesive. So you peel it apart and then you rub off the dry adhesive. You just kind of roll it off. And so make sure you keep track of the little gummy gooeys too. Uh, but that uh, completes um, the punched edge version, uh, top top loading uh, punched edge version of the um, the little money box. So thanks for watching, guys.